let's talk about the kidney and how amazing it is and how to protect it and exactly what you should be taking to minimize any type of toxicity or damage to the kidney, especially long-term. The kidney is actually very rugged. It's similar to the liver in that it can take a beating, but it can regenerate. Each kidney is composed of roughly about a million tiny little filters. And these kidneys have to filter all day and all night long, 24 seven, constantly. And they filter blood. And so where does the blood come from? Well, it comes from what you eat, right? So all the food that you eat, all the junk food, all the alcohol that you drink, all the medications and the drugs that you're exposed to, all the pollution, all the plastics end up in the blood and then they end up in the kidney. And your kidney just has to be able to differentiate um, what it wants to recycle and what it needs to get rid of. So there's a high degree of complexity going on in this little filter called the nephron. And as you age, you start losing these little filters to the point where you can actually lose up to 20% of your kidney, okay? They can shrink as you age. And so it becomes even more important that as you age, you really start eating better and are exposed to less toxins, drugs, and medications. Of course, that's just the opposite. As we age, we take more medications. And unfortunately, you know, uh, older people, especially if they end up in some type of home, are not eating the right foods. The kidneys also make certain hormones, uh, one being to make red blood cells. The other one is for blood pressure. But let's dive into some things that really um, destroy the kidney. And there's even so-called healthy foods that are destroying the kidney. We'll talk about those as well. Um, let's first talk about what makes up a kidney stone, right? Because having a kidney stone can create a lot of damage to your kidney, especially because it has these little crystals that can damage and create scar tissue of the kidney itself, as well as a little tube that connects the kidney to the bladder. So kidney stones most commonly come from what's called oxalate stones, like calcium oxalate stones, but you can also get them in a form of uric acid stones as well. One of the most important things to do, especially if you're prone to kidney stones, is to limit the amount of oxalates that you're exposed to. And if you're on the ketogenic plan, uh, chances are you're probably eating something right now that is very high in oxalates. So almonds, spinach, uh, beet tops, peanuts, uh, grains, beans, sweet potatoes, cassava, tapioca, which comes from cassava, kiwi, chocolate, Swiss chard, turmeric has a good amount of oxalates. However, turmeric has a lot of other properties to help decrease inflammation, as well as prevent the binding of calcium and oxalates. But also cinnamon is a bit high in oxalates, uh, as well as clove. Now, the other point I want to mention about these oxalates, because they can really create some issues that go beyond just problems in the kidney. They can create arthritis as well as something called pseudo gout. Gout is normally created by this uric acid crystal that's developing, but with pseudo gout, it's not uric acid. There's some other types of crystals that are developing from calcium and also can be worsened if you have high levels of oxalates, right? Either in the diet or your body's just making them. One point about pseudogout is that anything that increases the excretion of too much calcium uh, could worsen it, okay? And interestingly enough, uh, too much salt can cause a release of this calcium from the kidneys. So if you currently are consuming a lot of salt and probably not enough potassium, you might want to just make a change and see if that doesn't help you. For most of the population, you can handle a lot of salt, but for a select small group of people, especially if they have gout or even pseudo gout, they might do better without excessive salt. I think really the big problem is the ratio of potassium to sodium. And if you had enough potassium, you know, your salt level would be fine, but I would just recommend playing around with the dosage and start lowering the salt and, and raising the mm -hmm. potassium and see if you don't feel better. So by decreasing the salt, you're going to be excreting calcium a lot less and it won't develop into crystals. The other interesting point about oxalates has to do with um, malabsorption uh, in your gut. If you have malabsorption, and I'm talking about damage in the gut, let's say you have inflammation, you have uh, celiac or Crohn's or irritable bowel syndrome, 
gastric bypass, for example. So there's a certain level of damage in your digestive tract that doesn't allow you to absorb certain things, especially fats. And if you're doing like the ketogenic diet and, um, or even carnivore, and you have all this fat that's coming into the gut, but you can't really absorb the fat, some of that fat is going to bind with the calcium. And that's going to leave the oxalates free to be reabsorbed, okay, go into your blood and end up in a kidney. So there is this interesting connection between fat binding to calcium and then freeing up this oxalate. If you're eating foods low in oxalates, you'd have nothing to worry about. Also, another point about that, if you're eating foods high in oxalates and you take more calcium with it, maybe through the dairy, then you're also protected uh, so if you're going to do some spinach dish and you had uh, cheese with it, that might be helpful. So that's just another way to counter the damage of these oxalates on the kidney. Since the kidney can be very sensitive to too much uric acid and oxalates, when they usually do a urine test for people with gout or kidney stones, they usually always find that there's excessive amounts of calcium in the urine, excessive amounts of uric acid oxalates. And there's also lower amounts of this other thing called citrates. Citrates. Now, what are citrates? Well, your body makes them. Also, you can get it from consuming citrus, uh, like lemons or limes, right? And citrus is really interesting because it actually binds with the oxalates in a way that prevents the calcium from binding, and it can lower your risk of getting kidney stones. And the thing about uh, consuming lemons is that they're alkaline. That's one way to counter uh, gout if you have too much uric acid. So this is why lemons are really good for the kidney, okay? They protect the kidney. They're, they have potassium in there. Uh, they provide some alkalinity, but they also protect against these oxalates. Another interesting natural remedy would be apple cider vinegar. You take like a tablespoon in your water in the morning as a way to prevent stones. Let me just kind of circle back to potassium uh, again and talk a little bit more about that. Potassium is probably one of the best minerals to protect the kidney. And people are so concerned about taking potassium because they've heard something that potassium is bad for the kidney. It's only bad if you have a stage five kidney disease, like end stage kidney disease, where you wouldn't want to take potassium. But apparently, um, even if there is some damage to the kidney, potassium can be protective. So since the general population doesn't consume a lot of potassium foods, uh, potassium in a like electrolyte powder or just high potassium foods are very, very beneficial for the kidney and they can help balance it. the sodium. Leafy greens, large salads, um, avocados, very, very high in potassium. Well, but so are beet leaves, but beet leaves are very high in oxalates. So you want to consume um, vegetables that are high in potassium, but low in oxalates. And so even though spinach is very high in potassium, you wouldn't want to do it because it's high in oxalates as well. But there's other things you can do to counter that damage. You can actually, again, have a little cheese with that. And that way it'll uh, give you the calcium to prevent some of those oxalates from binding. But I probably didn't talk about the, the most uh, damaging thing to your kidney which is sugar, okay? Because the number one cause of end-stage kidney disease is diabetes, right? And that comes from a high-carb diet. You know, it's so interesting if you look at the flip side of that, the ketogenic diet, low-carb, uh, you might hear reports that, oh, the ketogenic diet is really bad for your kidneys, so you need to avoid it. Because you might develop a ketoacidosis. And uh, well, first of all, we're always recommending the, the healthy version of the ketogenic diet. So you're not going to develop ketoacidosis. Ketoacidosis occurs when you're a diabetic and you forget to take your insulin and you have super high levels of acidity and ketones, which you're never going to see if you're not a diabetic. Actually, ketones are very healthy for the kidney and a high carb diet is not very healthy to the kidney because you're exposing the kidney, the little filters with so much oxidation and that's basically kind of rusting out the kidney. And then what happens is once you destroy that filter, then you start seeing glucose in the urine because we're not recycling it anymore. And one test to evaluate what's going on in the kidneys is actually to check your blood, like your waste product of protein is called urea. So it's called 
blood, urea, nitrogen. So with kidney disease, you'll see uh, excessive amount of protein in the urine, which is not good, but you also see urea or a waste product of protein in the blood. But you also see um, another compound called creatinine in the urine as well in excessive amounts. And that just indicates there's another protein problem with your muscles not being handled by the kidney. But creatinine can also occur from other reasons as well, because when you like eat a lot of cooked meat, okay, when you cook it, you actually convert creatine to creatinine, and that can show up in the urine, as well as consuming just large amounts of protein. But typically, you're only going to see a problem with that if your kidneys are not healthy. If your kidneys are healthy and you're eating a lot of protein, uh, I think you're not going to see any problem. In fact, I really have not found any really good evidence to show that uh, eating too much protein will do any damage to the kidney. It's usually when someone's eating a lot of protein and a lot of sugar at the same time. But creatinine can also show up if there's liver damage or even as a side effect from taking ACE inhibitors, which are uh, medications for blood pressure. Or if you're doing heavy duty exercise, it can show up. So you have to be able to differentiate is it a kidney problem or is it something else? So let's just summarize some of the things that you can do to really keep these kidneys in check. Uh, I would do lemon water every morning. Actual, uh, if you can squeeze a lemon, that would be best. Put it in the water, add your apple cider vinegar, drink your liquids. Um, it's probably a good idea, especially if you're prone to kidney stones, to consume uh, two and a half liters of water because kidney stone occurs because there's a super saturated amount of urine. Uh, and you're getting all these crystals developing. So if you're drinking enough liquids, you're going to be fine with that. Second point is to avoid high oxalate uh, type foods. And of course, there's a lot more to talk about that, but I gave you the ones that are like the most important. And if you do eat foods high in oxalates, well, add some dairy to it or add some calcium to counter that. And of course, a really important point is to go on the low carb uh, ketogenic plan with intermittent fasting. And also out of all the sugars, fructose, by the way, and I want to just add this to the mix, can really spike your uric acid um, more than a lot of other things. So fructose is really, really bad, as in high fructose corn syrup. Also, when you're consuming a lot of vitamin C, and I know there is some benefits of doing high levels of vitamin C for certain things, but if you're trying to get rid of um, your gout or your pseudogout, and you're consuming massive amounts of vitamin C in the form of ascorbic acid, uh, well, just uh, make some changes, cut that out for a couple of days and see if your pain doesn't just go away. I just wanted to, in this video, include a lot of different links to things that could be aggravating your condition. Now, let's say you are a diabetic or you have kidney damage already. There are things you can do to help protect the kidney even more in addition to potassium. And that would be consuming a lot of the phytonutrients or the antioxidants in certain plant foods, especially in microgreens, okay? Which are these little baby plants. They, they grow a little bit more than sprouts, okay? And they're, I recommend the ones grown in soil if you can get them. And the reason I'm saying that is if you're consuming like microgreens, right? Compared to adult vegetables, you're gonna get uh, some of these phytonutrients in levels that are, you know, 20, 50 to 100 times more than the adult vegetables. So all it takes is a small amount of these things to create a big effect. And if you're trying to you know, protect the kidney, um, this is very doable, it's very easy. Just add it to your salad and it can help protect you. And I'm talking about the phytonutrients like sulforaphane, flavonoids, carotenoids, even chlorophyll. All of those are really good to protect the kidney. But just one last point about that, turmeric, does have high levels of oxalates. So there's mixed reviews on that powerful phytonutrient. Now that you have that information, if you have not seen my video on the seven warning signs of a toxic kidney, I put that up right here. Check it out.